Welcome to Kingdom Conversation with C. Ivan Johnson. This is your time to be uplifted, inspired, and propelled with in-depth, relevant conversations with Kingdom and Marketplace influencers. Now, here's your host, C. Ivan Johnson. Good evening, and we are going to try this again. And so if you can hear me well, could you please indicate and let me know that you can hear us well? All right, much better. There we go. There we go. All right, wonderful. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us tonight for Kingdom Conversations. And I am just absolutely elated and excited to have these Kingdom Generals with us. Pastor Welton is on his way. He's trying to work on some technical things on his end, but we're just going to go ahead and delve right into it. Certainly, these individuals that you see before you today, as well as Pastor Welton, they are not in need of an introduction, but they are worthy of an honor honorable presentation. Pastor Kimberly Jones, Real Talk Kim, travels the world fulfilling her passion and purpose of loving people back to life. She is a mother, pastor, entrepreneur, best-selling author, entertainer, and most importantly, a worshiper after God's own heart. Pastor Kim is the senior pastor of Limitless Church in Fayetteville, Georgia. She is a human rights advocate with a passion for giving back and believes in the compassion of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Kim is an advocate partner with the Rock, Paper, Scissors Foundation, a nonprofit organization which exists to foster healing and give voice to those who have been silenced from all forms of abuse and human trafficking. Just wave at us, Real Talk Kim. Welcome, Real Talk Kim, everyone. So glad to have you. Pastor Micaiah Young, he is a husband, a father, prolific preacher, author, and recording artist. Pastor Young is a gifted man, passionate about life, ministry, and the advancement of persons overcoming hurt and loss in pursuit of victorious living. He is the founding pastor of the Life Center Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wisconsin and the founder of the I Am a Son Foundation, a nonprofit organization that focuses on building healthy self identity in boys and men. Let's welcome Pastor Micaiah. All right. And Pastor Welton Smith, who is on his way, is a father, a prophetic voice influencer and mega conference host. He is the pastor and the founder of the New Life Family Church in Detroit, Michigan. And he has been pastoring since he was 22 years old. This church is a Christ centered Bible based. And there he is. There he is. I was just introducing you. Oh, wow. Bible-based, <laughs> community-involved, family-oriented, and well-balanced ministry. He has traveled extensively with his radical and relevant preaching and teaching, infusing and imparting divine knowledge, wisdom, and strategy. Pastor Welton is dedicated to leading unbelievers and you, you really, you really, you, you really, you, you really going to read all of that, ain't you? You're going to read all of it. Well, I, I, wrote, I wrote most of it, so I, I think I should be able to <laughs> Come on. I believe it's into the transforming power of Jesus Christ. Let's welcome Pastor Welton Smith. You, this is my sisters that are watching. I need you to share this broadcast. I'm telling you, your life is getting ready to be transformed. Your life is getting ready to be empowered. You're going to be inspired and you are going to be uplifted and how to navigate these unprecedented times. And so without any further ado, let's just delve right into our discussion tonight. And I want Pastor Welton to start us off. Um, as we have entered into this time of pandemic, um, it has caused many ministry leaders and business owners and pastors to solely rely on the virtual platform. I've heard from various colleagues that during this time, uh, it has imposed many feelings of intimidation and trepidation. And it's been a very daunting feeling. Sometimes you're just kind of, you know, wondering, um, am I doing as well as this other person? And so you move into that realm of comparison. So my question to the panel, I'm going to ask if Pastor Welton would start us off is how do we become more comfortable and embrace our uniqueness and individuality in ministry without falling prey to comparison? Oh, wow. That's a loaded question. First of all, let me say to you, thank you for this opportunity to share with you uh, uh, along with Pastor Micaiah, who's a who's a great friend of mine, as well as Pastor Kim, who I I, I mean you can't be in ministry and uh, not be affected 
by the ministry of the real talk kim right so so i'm honored to be with these guys and to share with you so i think the question is how do we embrace our uniqueness without falling prey to the pitfall of comparison in this in this new space uh well the truth of the matter is uh in this space and climate that we find ourselves in it's really the space to create this is this is the hour of the innovator nothing will ever look like what it used to look like you're going to miss god trying to find him where he used to be and and a lot of our frustration comes when we fail to just kind of trust God in a space we've never been in before and realize he's been here before we got here, that um, the truth, the truth don't change because you don't like it. <laughs> denial, denial only puts your destiny on delay. Uh, God doesn't go back. Purpose doesn't go back and progress doesn't go back. I always tell people that, that, you, you got to lean into what God is doing to figure out how he wants you to do it. Uh, you you got to lean all the way into you. You Don't miss what this season has for you running away from it. And this season, it's like Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. He found himself in a place f- full of famine where now it's up to you to do like Isaac. You got to kind of dig in and find and you got to dig for new wells. There's still water there. And the thing about it is, it's almost like Isaiah, how the Bible says God, he brought the high place down and the low place up. So now both the high place and the low place are the same place. So there no, there's no such thing as comparison, competition, ain't no big guy and little guy. The big guy is the little guy. The mega church is the new storefront church because we all have, we, we've now reached a place where none of us have been before. The truth of the matter is, and I don't know if anybody's in the comment, but if you're in the comments, put these two words down and go on to sleep tonight. Nobody's right. Okay. How about that? And, and all of us are, all of us are trying day by day. All, no, nobody can coach you through. You can't say, Hey man, what did you do when you were here? We're in a season now where we're, it's going to take you relying on your ear, right? You're going to have to hear God for yourself in this season because he's really stripped us of all of the performance that we put in church. There's nothing left but your fruit and your real relationship with God. So in this in this space, you know, be, be encouraged. How, how do you, this is the season for you to figure out what else there is to you. This is the season where God has shut down everything that we normally do that make us who we are. The challenge becomes most of us do not know who we are aside from what we do, which is why in this season, I believe that God has given us our life back. And it's been so long since we had one, most of us don't know what to do with it. We made a life out of God's wife. And what he just did was he came back. I believe, Pastor Kim, we took God's church from him a long time ago. And what he just did was he came and took it back. Right. So now what he said is, give me my wife. I'm going to give you your life. But the question becomes, what is my life if it's no longer God's wife? (laughs) So the question... So so now this is a good season. How do I find confidence in who I am? Man, I don't know. I'm just enjoying the journey of meeting myself every day. (laughs) Every day I wake up, I meet a version of myself that I probably would have never met. Yeah. If God wouldn't have got me right where he is. And so this is the season for, for you to figure out what else are you? We know you a great preacher. We know you a great prophet. And the truth is, for many of us, that became our lives. And now we're so used to being busy because we think busy means productive. So we're used to being busy and we're used to being on the go and we're used to being under pressure. And here's the truth. Culture put so much pressure on the pulpit that men and women of God feel like it's a sin to have this much time to rest. 
I believe God's given up, given us our lives to see what our faith will let us do with it. My goodness, Pastor Micaiah. I agree a uh, hundred uh, plus percent with everything that uh, my brother Welton has stated. I mean, it's exactly what I've been saying and what I've been feeling during this time. I just think that uh, additionally, not to be redundant, uh, that we are in a space now where um, we must only focus on that which is essential. Uh, when we came into this pandemic, we were told um, not to leave your house unless it was for something that was essential, not to do anything unless it was that which was essential. And so for the church, um, especially um, uh, those who have um, been entrenched within um, certain uh, settings of tradition and uh, just uh, inundated with whatever the cultural norms have been, many people went into uh, a state of panic because what do you do when you cannot practice um, or carry out our duties um, religiously as we have been accustomed to doing? This happened right as we were going into um, Holy Week. Um, one of the most high um, celebrations for uh, the Christian church uh, around uh, the world. And so uh, what we usually do in our traditional settings, we could not do that anymore. Am I right? We yeah. could not um, have uh, communion at church. We could not have water baptism. And for some people who do feet washing and other things that are um, uh, most important to them, Palm Sunday, people were in a frenzy. What are we going to do? We can't pass out our palms. But what happened is we were forced into a place where now we have to learn how do we do what is essential. Um, I've been saying that as a person that likes to swim, um, I've discovered that when you swim, you get in the water as close to nude as possible. You cannot get in the water in a full jogging suit. You cannot get in the water with your shoes and with your cap and with anything that you would wear every day on uh, dry ground. Because if you get in the water with those things on, it's going to cause you to sink and you won't be able to swim or float. And so the only reason why you wear a bathing suit is because you only need to cover what is essential. And so we are out here in the water now, and we have had to strip ourselves of things that are not essential, things that have adorned ourselves to make us feel good about our ways and times of worship, but it has not been essential. And the things that are not essential are also not necessarily effective. And so where we are now is in a space where we have to learn that the only way that we're going to survive is if we are wearing what is essential and we are disassembling and disconnecting ourselves from that which is not essential. How do we not get into comparing ourselves with others and in the competition? Everything Wilton said was right. We are now all on the same plane. But furthermore, we also, if we're going to survive, we have to be effective. And the only way that we're going to be effective is if we are unique and we are faithful to what our calling is and who we are, and we will never be effective if we are trying to be who somebody else is. Because while we are trying to be who they are, who we are is being neglected. And the people that we are called to minister to and the mission that we are called to fulfill will go lacking. And so I think that in this moment, um, that's what I keep, you know, I, you know, I, Welton uh, is a friend of mine, uh, Pastor uh, Ivan as well. And uh, Pastor Kim is uh, now uh, one of my best sisters. Uh, now. Uh, but I mean, you know, I, when I first started and I, I'm just going to be honest, you know, uh, Welton, um, when I first started in this, um, you know, this virtual space, which I think is amazing. Uh, uh, Pastor Ivan, that um, uh, we had these technical difficulties because that's what we're talking about, um, how to manage in this space. We weren't used to that, you know, um, having to do that, but um, learning how to keep on rolling like you did incredibly tonight. 
Um, that's the space that we're in, and we all understand that. Um, and it could be that God let it be so to just help this conversation to organically evolve. But nonetheless, um, I was, uh, you know, trying to create what we used to do, like yeah. th- like the Sunday before, you know, because none of us wanted to let go. None of us, when they first told us, you know, you had to only have a certain amount of people, we were saying, we're still having church. We're going to clean the church. We were showing people uh, pictures of us cleaning the church and what happened. And, you know, we had hand, san- hand sanitizer. And then the next week they were like, shut it down. <laughs> You know, and then we had to learn what to do. And so when we started doing virtual church, you all were already doing it. We were too, but not on the level that we are now. But when we started doing virtual church, I was trying to have church like we used to have church. You know, I was still trying to preach the same. I was, it was just me and a camera. We were still trying to have a praise break, you know, (laughs) trying to shout and run around. And then when I, I realized, now listen, you're wearing yourself out. You look crazy. You know, I mean, what's a party by yourself? You know, I mean, and I know we talk about I can praise him by myself. I can praise him in my house and what have you. But it does not translate the same when I'm sitting in my living room on my couch and I'm watching you run around in the church, especially when you are not doing it authentically, you are doing it because you are trying to replicate or duplicate something that existed that is no longer in this space. And so I had to learn how to seek relevance in the moment. And so for me, not that it's not for anybody else, but for me, the Lord pulled me back and said, get you a chair and sit down. Stop screaming. Stop hollering. Stop trying to produce or create something that doesn't exist. Deal in the reality and meet people where they are. And that's what I did. Wow. Um, Real talk, Kim. Man, you guys are bad to the bone. You hear me? Like I'm being blessed. I'm ready to run around my house by myself. I sure am. <laughs> you know, uh, when this thing started, I I realized real quickly that, you know, I'll travel 50 weeks out of the year. And I thought that was awesome. And I love traveling. And that first week, I realized I had like uh, the first, man, I had like 10 events cancel. And I started freaking out like, oh, my God, you know what the world. And then God quickly started showing me within the first 24 hours, girlfriend, you've been in a pandemic before you were in a pandemic. And I need you to take care of some things in your life, because I think what all of you have been saying is so clear. So many of us I loved what Pastor Welton said when he said, God just said, give me back my church. Like y'all took it. You got your time. You got your praise break. You got your, you know, the, the clock counting you down. You ain't, we ain't having altar calls no more. You know, we good at shouting and falling on the floor and the world was a mess. And right now it's proof. You can just look and see all the division in the church. There's so much division. There's so much anger. There's so much hatred amongst pastors. And, you know, if, if that's what we're seeing right now, really what's been, what's happening is the infection that was in the church is being exposed. And what we're seeing is, is that God ain't playing. And just like he can shut the entire world down globally within 10 days, what was supposed to be 10 days, we're going into 150. And if we all look what we thought was making it, We're making it just fine without all of that. And what I'm finding, guys, is that people that never heard about Jesus, a whole new wave of people, and it ain't church people. It is the world. It is people that ain't never walked into a church. And what are they doing? They don't care about the hooping. They don't care about the hollering. They don't care about the Kojic dance. They don't care about none of that stuff. They're like, I need something that is going to make me, there's something going on. I don't know what it is, but I do know the pandemic that I had, the divorce hurt, the pain, the the bitterness, the affairs. The I mean, we saw all of these, the, if you a pastor and you ain't living right, you better close your door. You you need to be the one that's closing your door. You know what I'm saying? But in this season, the, the demand is coming on righteousness. And I think that's what's happening, guys, is we are seeing that God has taken us back to the basics. He's given us a chance to all get it right. 
He ain't judging us. He ain't over here writing us off the couture rack and putting us on the clearance rack. He is saying, I'm bringing you all. We're all just like all of you said. There's no more mega churches. We're all on the same playing field. It don't matter if Pastor Welton preached in T.D. Jakes' church two months ago. None of us know. We don't know nothing. We all sitting in our living room on the couches, right? He is saying, I need you from this moment on. God is about to open. This ain't the new normal. The new normal is going to be better than anything that we walked out and left. All of that old stuff is gone. When we come back in this place, there's going to be a sound of revival. There's going to be a sound where we are. When we walk in that place, the demand of the Holy Spirit is going to be on us as pastors. And I believe that is what's happened. God has allowed us to get some things right in our lives, get back to the basics, get on our knees, get on our our faces, go to the throne instead of the phone. We ain't calling our pastors. Pastor Francis, I'm like, what'd you preach today? How was it, man? How many people came to your church? How many people got saved today? That's not what we're looking at now. It's all focusing on Jesus now. He's the center of it all. And I believe that's what's happened. I believe that God is getting us back, man. He's getting us back and he's saying, you know what? I trust you. All four of us sitting on here tonight, God up in heaven is saying, man, I'm proud of you kids. I'm proud of y'all. I'm proud of you, Mike. I'm proud of you, Pastor Mike. I'm proud of you, Pastor Welton. I'm proud of you, Pastor Ivan, because you didn't just fall apart. There's so many people falling apart right now. There's so many people walking out of their churches and losing their churches right now. Why? Because they weren't like you, Pastor Micah. They didn't say, well, I'm, I, I got to sit down. I'm tired of running around my living room. They weren't able to do that. Why? Because pride had taken over their lives and consumed them. And so what we're seeing now is just a move of God and a revival that's about to take place. And when I tell you what God is about to do in this world with that I ever known, we got some. Well, they yes, weren't God. ready. Yes, God. All right, Pastor Kim, looks like you froze up, but we know you're going to be right back in just a moment. But my goodness, I'm telling you, this conversation is phenomenal. Um, I have seen a lot lately, particularly within the last month, um, so many members of different congregations. And you can see like this uh, growing trend of everyone saying I'm over virtual church. I'm over this um, engagement, just only being able to worship and praise and and really connect with my church online. Um, how do we continue to engage our congregations in virtual church? And how do we as pastors and ministers maintain our momentum? And I'm going to ask if Pastor Micaiah would start us off with this uh, portion of the conversation. How do we continue to engage our congregations in virtual church? And how do we as pastors maintain our momentum? I don't know. That That's really a, a Welton uh, question um, because he's so far ahead of the game. He's been doing it um, since before we came into this pandemic. But um, I guess, you know, um, it, it kind of ties back into the previous question. Um, and I guess my particular answer for that um, is um, you got to see your purpose in this, right? Um, because people will uh, not be uh, any more motivated than you yourself are. Um, and so this is work. Uh, I don't want anybody to think that because uh, we have come into this uh, pandemic and <laughs> that that we are uh, doing um, uh, this virtual thing and, and we're at home or wherever we are, that we are not working. We are working. Uh, Pastor Kim just told us that um, this is work. And so I think that um, the uh, one of the most essential things to do is for us to uh, remain connected and committed to the call during this moment. And a part of that uh, has to do with us um, uh, being um, uh, revived ourselves, uh, replenishing ourselves, taking time to uh, do the things that will help us to remain engaged. In terms of engaging um, our listeners, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I really don't know the answer to that, um, but I'm really here to find out uh, what we should do um, in order to accomplish that. <laughs> All right, Pastor Micaiah, thank you for your honest and yeah. candid 
<laughs> answer to the question. Pastor Welton, uh, Pastor Kim is back. She made it back. Uh, Pastor Kim, this question, how can we continue to engage our congregations in virtual church and how do we as pastors and ministers and leaders maintain our momentum? This is a question that precedes a lot of the statements that we've seen on social media. I'm over virtual church. I'm tired of church like this. I'm ready to go back. Um, how can we as leaders continue to engage our congregations in virtual church? And I just think authenticity, you know, I think that um, I'm y'all, I'm not real professional at this. I don't know how God's blessed me like he has. <laughs> I just get out there and man, I'm authentic. I uh, I'm spirit led. Um, I don't really have a big script. Um, I just let the Lord move. And I know that people are hungry for God. And so uh, I give them a little bit of Jesus Red Bull <laughs> and I give them the source. I mean, there's really no uh, big theory that I have. People ask me all the time, what do you do? What do you do? Because people hang with me, man. I got a great support system and they just seem to keep following and supporting everything I do. And I think it's because I'm showing them Jesus. I think people want hope. I think people want to know that it's going to be all right. I think people want to see transparency. I, want, I think they want to see that, you know, we we're making it through something. So that would be, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. And it seems to be working is I'm being authentic, man. And I am being real and raw and relevant and I'm getting in their juice every day and being like, get your butt up. We're all in a pandemic. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're not stuck because you ain't no tree. Get your butt up and let's go. We ain't staying in this pandemic. Put that ho-ho down. Get up. Let's do something. So that's what I'm doing, y'all. I'm just being authentic and staying mean, staying transparent. It's working. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do it <laughs> uh, yeah. Pastor Welton um, um, I agree with what both of them said uh, Pastor Young uh, definitely uh, talked about as well as Pastor Kim um, to be quite honest I agree with Pastor Young that we have to I think we, we got to be real about where we are Again, you won't have vision nor strategy for anything you have not accepted. The internet, well, I believe this, this ain't, I'm a, the internet is the future. Now, first of all, you're gonna have to accept that, all right? Now, so, but the thing about it is, so yes, they're not at home screaming and hollering, not the majority of them. They, they sitting on their phone, down, laying on the pillow, and they got you on the on the thing, but but in, in, in a, in, to add to that, and my answer might be a little crazy, but you can't. That every plan we make, we don't know if it's going to go through or if it's going to get canceled. Hey, how about this? Let's accept we're not in control of anything. And that will relieve some of the pressure that we feel to have answers that we don't even have. We're not clear on the right questions. So what we need to really accept is this is Psalm 23. He's made us to lie down. But here's what's crazy. We had no idea this was a green pasture. We, why would you have to make me lie down in a you better, pastor, you better pray, pastor well. and, and, and there's some of us that are on this live. Here's the truth. Some of you are trying to get back to your normal, but you really can't answer why. So here's what he's done. He's made us lie down in green pastures. And he's, what, this is what else has happened. Man, he's made the water be still. He's made the entire earth over. This is a Sabbath year. I think the lesson that he's teaching us is that you don't have the answer. I'm the answer. That's the, this whole thing is, a, in my opinion, much of this was not about death, in my opinion, concerning the body of Christ. It was about humility. There's always going to be somebody that call you when they see you online. 
they gonna see you on live and say, man, I had to call you because you was, I saw you was on live, man. Who are you talking to? Nobody <laughs> right now, I'm talking to you. See, I believe, and this is what I really believe happened. And and and, and tell me how far to go with this because I don't want to push the opportunity. So good, Pastor man. Ivan, I believe that really what happened is that God just allowed all every altar of religious intimidation, manipulation, come on, and strangulation. They have all been torn down and overthrown. Here's why we're uncomfortable. We're uncomfortable with God tearing down many of those altars because for many people, we made a living off of them. Hmm. So now there is no way you can't get up and lie on God. If you say God told you open your church, bet not nobody call you or you're a false prophet. If you say that God told you, lead, well, put, lead my people this way. There is no way for us to continue to intimidate or manipulate God's people. He sat the entire earth down to let all of us know I'm in charge. So pastors, what can you do in this season? What I called you to do, preach. What you show up and do, Makai Young, because guess what happened? It's like the book, book of Matthew, that this whole time, Pastor Ivan, you know what we've been doing as pastors? You've been planting in a field. And the whole time you've been planting, the seed fell differently on every person sitting in your church. Some, they fell by the wayside because they wasn't, they, they wasn't listening about what God was saying. Then there was some, the Bible says, they was like the thorns that when they was in church, they, they were shouting out, you know, but the Bible said they don't have no roots. See, in church, you need roots. In, in, in church, you need rhythm. In, in this season, you need roots, man. <laughs> he, yeah. they, you, you can't dance your way out of it because to a great degree, we took God's church and made it social. We made it strategic. And we made his church about us. Now, here's what happened. Jesus said, you go on and do the planting and let the wheat and tear grow together. It's not your job to touch nothing. You preach. And what's going to happen is wheat and tear can grow together until harvest. The Bible says the harvest is what does the separating. And what's happening in the body of Christ is we're seeing a separation of people who knew church versus people who knew God. Because to a great degree, this generation don't worship God. We worship worship. Mm. We on fire for God, but we don't read the Bible. We don't have a prayer life. And let's be honest, I'm so disappointed as Pastor Kim, I'm listening to leaders in this climate defending and discussing our return to church, why we should, why we should not go. And I keep saying, have we forgotten that what we do is spiritual, man? This ain't a basketball game. This ain't a football game. We're talking about the holiness of God's presence. Or is it that? Our, our reasons for wanting to return to church have nothing to do with God. And I think Amen. that's the scariest thing. It's, well, I miss the people. Well, do you come to church for the people? Or is that why he shut it down? What did we say little church stuff? You know, that, that manipulation, and terror, it don't work now. We say little stuff like, well, you know, I miss the atmosphere because there's something about the atmosphere. Well, if you're really in God's presence, is there an atmosphere? No. <laughs> and if you have an encounter with God, since what we need to get back for, even though we know it's life or death, because the same people that want to run in church in the summer are the ones that's going to blame God in the fall. Okay? So, so everybody want to run. Okay, no problem. All right. So the question that we have to ask is whose church is this? One preacher called me and said, man, you're putting too much pressure on the church because people, they're going to the restaurant. They're going to the malls. They're going to the to, to the friend's house. He said, why can't they come to church? I said, man, have we forgotten that what we do ain't in our name? See, I don't go to the restaurant, Pastor Ivan, expecting to be healed. I go to church for that. 
I don't go to my homie's barbecue expecting to be delivered. Our business is the kingdom. Our job is to move how he moves. I'm not waiting on the government to tell me if I can or can't do something, man. My, my job is to discern the times. The air is deadly. So make sure your motives aren't open in your church because we can't manipulate God's people in this same season. Because in this season, following a dummy can be deadly. It can be deadly. So in this season, are we we're we going back to church? Okay. All right. So so the question becomes, if 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 we're going back to church, is God there? Well, if God is there, can Corona be there? If God and Corona get in the fight, who wins? The truth is, I believe many of us have to accept that the earth is still settling and none of us have the answer. So this is the season for us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What he's doing in this season, he's made the water be still so that he can restore our souls. He shut down everything we do, man, so that he can work on who we are. The project on the altar is who I am versus who I'm called to be. And that's what he's working on in this climate. So I think pastors need to know that because a lot of pastors are under pressure to have the right answer. And none of us have the answer. We're all taking a try and experience and a shot in the right direction every day. So, so how do you how do you stay motivated? Always remember that recreation and recreation are spelled the same. You have to recreate and give yourself time to recreate. Take a break. And to be honest, Pastor Kim, I, I don't know you personally, but the reason I know you is because you have given your life to the ministry, to the kingdom, building people up from state to state, country to country. And in this season, what God's saying is, sit right here. Now, let me give it back to him. Now, let me, let, you understand? Let me, let me take care of you. Let me make sure you ain't missing a beat. Let me make sure you realize it's a green pasture. So don't rush through it. Sit still. None of us have the answer. I, yeah. I, I got... You know, so take true. it day at a time. And I think when we embrace, when we embrace the fact we don't know, yeah, it relieves the pressure that I gotta know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. Hey, look, Pastor Kim, I can't call my members and tell them, y'all better come in church now. You better sit there and watch me. You bet I can't say that. Ain't that you can't even, what I'm gonna do, sit you down. <laughs> That's what true. You, what, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, Bishop? If I if I don't do what you gonna do <laughs> because the truth is every Sunday the only people who are listening to us are the ears assigned to our voices. We're no longer sifting through motives in the atmosphere. We're no longer pumping and priming people to wake up and praise God. Come you know on, who listen you know no. who's listening to you now? Who wants to? That's wow. also why preaching is no longer just a, a, a presentation. Preaching is not based on performance. Now preaching is a pour because the pull is different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, the church, the church became about us. And just like he did in Matthew, the Bible says they told Jesus it was a church in town. Jesus said, where's the church? They said, it's downtown. We're going to go down. Jesus said, well, take me to the church. I want to make sure I get there early. The church was packed, Makai. It was people everywhere. The music was jumping. And Jesus walked in and said, I thought y'all told me this was a church. They said, no, 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 this is a church. This is, a, this is the fastest growing church in the city. And Jesus said, this, this, this ain't no church. They said, what you mean this ain't no church? He said, this can't be no church because ain't nobody praying. <laughs> he said, everybody in this church has taken my house and made it a den. It's, so this church ain't about me no more. It's about your credit repair. But when we preach holiness, it's hate. It's hate words. Come on, pastor. When we preach sin, it's it, it's an attack. But if we make the message and the series about fixing your marriage. Now, you marry somebody, you know wasn't saved anyway. But we're going to preach a message for a month to convince you that you didn't marry wrong. So so the truth Come of the on, matter pastor. is, let, let's, let's be honest about what the church became. And Jesus said, this church's hands 
are not up. They're out. Everything is about what's your praise team going to sound like? Is it air conditioned? Is it children's church? What pastor teacher? What song is being sang? Who is the choir? And you know what he did? He walked over to the table of the money changers, Makai. And while it was counting that money, the Bible say he did with that, that church the same thing he did with this year. He flipped over everything they was counting on. <laughs> he walked over to the table while they was counting the money. And, and this year, if God's done nothing else to all of us to prove to us whose church it is, <laughs> he flipped over what we was counting on. Whoa! We took his church and he just came and took it back. And I think we have to rest in our assignment. Your pastor's not there to go to your birthday party. That's what you want me to do. Your pastor's not your boyfriend. That's what you want me to be. A lot of stuff we thought was warfare wasn't really warfare. It was motives and personal mess getting involved in ministry. So the social church just, just got shut down. And I'll say this and I'll close with it. I always tell people that, that I believe people have patterns. Once you learn the patterns, you won't be surprised by the people. Most people you talk to that want to go back to church, they fall into one of three patterns. They're either people that didn't come when church was open. <laughs> That's number one. They really want to go now. Because remember, a year ago, the church ain't no building. It's in my heart. Well, now we're saying the church is in your heart. No, it's not in my heart. It's the building. Because y'all just want to be mad at something. So that's the first group. <laughs> the second group of people are people that only came to church to raise hell. <laughs> they can't got nobody to raise hell with. <laughs> they, they, they ain't got no, because that was their life. <laughs> but then the third group of people, people who, who church church made them important man they were superior to somebody else because because it's like it's like when 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 you was when you was at the church you were the head armor bearer you was the pastor's assistant you was over the department you can boss everybody around and yeah, now man. you at home and you ain't nothing but so because yeah, now man. the people the people that you stayed busy from because see so many people stuck with their wife and their life the, the the people the people you done stayed busy from because that's what we did we we stayed busy so we didn't have to go home and confront our reality Woo! so so now god keeps slapping us in the face with our choices he keeps slapping us in the face with what we preferred in this season i'm blessed to pastor next month i pastor 14 years and i can honestly say that i'm clear in, 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 in this season, that my assignment from the Lord is to work on who he called me to be. Come on, Pastor. What God gave me, Micaiah, is man, you've been working on church the last 14 years. Now let's work on you. Come on, Pastor. Let God fix, not your image. Come Let on, God Pastor. Fix you. And, and I think so many of us are used to being the helper. We don't know how to receive the help. So, so there's some of you that have nothing to do. You ain't, where you going? You getting, you getting clean to go from the, from the bedroom to the living room. But since we're not busy, we don't feel like ourselves. Whew, come on, man. We don't feel like ourselves because we don't have no pressure. We don't have no drama. The members, pastor, can I meet with you? No, pastor, can no. you come meet with me? No, it's nothing we can do but what we're called to do and then preach and teach the word. And the people who will listen and follow are the people who are called to you. And I think that's what we got to accept. Man! <laughs> what a well- That's hilarious. That's My hilarious. <laughs> Does anybody want to follow up on that? Pastor Micaiah, uh, Pastor Kim? Yeah, I, I, I mean, that, that was so prolific oh. and just amazing. Right. Uh, the, the only thing that um, I, I would like to uh, just uh, maybe add is that um, when it comes down to our engagement, I think we need to find out who we're trying to engage and why. Um, uh, Welton uh, just said that many people want to go back to church because church made you feel important. Um, and so I think in this space, so many um, individuals are uh, working so hard to try to keep what they had, um, not realizing or accepting the fact that uh, what we had is no more. Um, we will never be able to return 
to what we once had. Um, and the truth of the matter is, and I know this is hurtful for many pastors, but um, your exact membership makeup no. is not coming back together ever again the same. Uh, there are some people that you will never no. see again in the four walls of your church. No. Um, there are some people that, you know, no. you're calling them, you're texting them, you are, they're gone. They're gone. You know, they, they have checked out. But I think that um, we, we have to make sure that we are um, really learning what is our assignment and our call, you know, in this in this season and being uh, pushed out of the four oh, walls okay. of of the church. I think um, you can't hear. Go ahead. <laughs> I just, I can't hear Makai. I can oh. hear Kim. Can you hear me, Kim? I can hear you, Pastor Welton. I, I cannot hear. I, but I can hear. Well, I can Mikhail, hear you. It looks like he's saying something. And you're missing it because Pastor Makai, he ripping it up. He's ripping it up. You're missing it, man. It's, it's, stuff, it's, it's stuff I got from you anyway. It don't matter. But, you know. Um, but but anyway, I, just briefly, I just I, I just want to say that I think that we have to know what our assignment yeah. is, um, and we have to know who we're called to. Like Welton said, that um, you know that that we've been called to a certain amount of people, a certain group of people, and those are the people that we will minister to. But if we don't realize that there is a new crop, and that there is a harvest, um, and that there are souls that are out there that are not in the pews or have never sat in the pews that we have ministered to, um, we're going to miss in this moment. So I think that when it comes down to engagement, we have to make sure that we are going after the harvest. We got to go after those unchurched, the people that have never come into our doors, the yeah. people that uh, that we have never touched, the people that have never heard, because the people that have been accustomed to this are the people that are going to be the hardest for us to, to really re, um, you know, connect with and, yeah. and bring back. But we we have given them what we had. That's right. Now is our time to minister to people that have never heard this gospel and never Man. been touched by the ministries that we have. Man, that is so good. You know, I feel it. I feel everything they're saying. And I, I was even thinking when Pastor Welt was talking and he said, man, uh, that that a lot of people was, what you know, their, their label, what they had was uh, the reason they want to go back to church. And I will have to tell you, as I'm sitting listening to Pastor Micaiah and Pastor Welton both, I'm thinking they're exactly right. That's where I'm at. I'm at such a good place in my life. I have found during this pandemic just the peace of God, man. And I'm so at rest. I don't, I don't, I don't want it to go back. <laughs> you know, I'm I love this new thing that God is doing. And and you know, I started a, a limitless I church. Uh, that is growing leaps and bounds of people that ain't never walked in a church and I'm getting to help them buy Bibles, you know? So I think, I think you guys are right. We're in a good place, mm -hmm. good place for God to show great revival, mm -hmm. great words, guys. This has been good. I want to ask one more question that I'm going to allow you all to give um, a closing word of exhortation. But during this pandemic, there are many visionaries who feel exhausted and depleted in ministry. And so what do you personally do to recalibrate so that you can operate with optimal effectiveness? You know, for me, I sit and listen to guys like y'all. <laughs> you know, I'm constantly uh, spending time with God, constantly um, uh, in my word. I'm spending a lot of time just listening to myself. I think for 40, I'll be 48 years old next week. Wow. Happy and birthday. August. Years old, y'all, and I think for the first time in my life, um, I know Kim. I know what I like and what I don't like. I know I've got some absolutes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I got my heart's right. And so I think that's what I do. I spend a lot of time just being intentional about knowing Kim because if I know Kim and I love Kim, then Kim can lead the people that God has called to me to break throughs and not break down. So I spend a lot of time on me. Good stuff. Good stuff. Pastor Welton. Um, um, am I, you said, what do I do to, to, to what, recharge? What was the question? I, recharge, I was like, recalibrate, refocus, readjust, realign so that you can operate in optimal, optimal ministry effectiveness. Um, uh, to be honest, I rest. Yeah. 
rest rest is such a big word man because so many people think rest is sleep uh that's what they think and the truth is rest rest to a great degree is trust you know and and, and i'm not i'm not a deep guy so i'm not trying to be me neither say that. i'm saying i mean i really whenever i find myself whenever i'm not working right i know i haven't rested with well. My, my my dad told me when I first started preaching, he said, every day you, you owe it to God and yourself to have a rested mind, a prepared body, and uh, a, a prepared mind and a prayed up spirit. Uh, so I really think, yeah, rest, man. Just, just. Rest. The truth is, I, I'm, I'm a different me without a nap. And I understand that. I'm a little less spiritual if I haven't eaten. <laughs> If I hadn't slept, you know, you know what I mean. I, I, I really, I, you you, you got to respect what you require. Respect yeah. what yeah. I require to be me. Like one thing about me in the morning, uh, you know, I, I tell people, give me my morning. You know, I wake up in the morning and I lay with God so I can figure out how to deal with the rest of y'all. You understand? I wake up early. That's that's my that's my time to kind of get my 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 mind together. Margin. Margin is a book that 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 everyone should get because at the end of the day, it pretty much talks about how how in life a lot of us think we got tanks for everything that we do, and the truth is that's not the case. You got one tank, and when it's gone, it's gone. So so your energy, you decide how much of of yourself you're gonna spend on each day. You know what I mean? And be okay with that. I, I learned that. I realized that I got to wear a different hat every day. And every day I'm going to fail at one of them hats. And I just pray that it's not the same hat every day. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, so, so I really believe that's what, what you what you really, it's so difficult to rest. It, it's and, and, that, and I think rest actually is how we, we hear God for what's next. We see what God's doing next. Uh, whenever you're in a rush to get there, it ain't God anyway. Uh, so so slow down so you can hear God because He's not moving as fast as you are. Wow, I wow, Pastor Micaiah. You know, I think um, what I do is just live. You know, uh, uh, what we've been talking about this pandemic has afforded us an opportunity to uh, be normal um, and to uh, do the things that we otherwise couldn't do. I have spent more time with my family. I spend more time with my children um, at one consecutive, you know, uh, period of time than ever before. And it has just been, um, it's been amazing. Um, recreation, um, sports, bike riding, working out, um, all of the things that I neglected before because I didn't have time to, those things helped me, you know, um, to just to feel um, uh, normal. To, you know, to, to be able to feel human. Um, and I've given myself permission um, to uh, enjoy life during this space. I've given myself permission to enjoy Sundays um, in a different way than I've enjoyed them before. Every day during this pandemic, I have worn T-shirts, <laughs> shorts, tennis shoes, <laughs> sweatpants um and i have enjoyed it yeah you know, i've enjoyed it um and so that's what i'm doing uh, and i'm praying uh so i have that balance um, so that's what i'm doing and anybody if you have any other suggestions let me know because I'm, I'm still on the search <laughs> <laughs> my goodness this conversation has been so life-giving yes, and what i want to do in closing i'm going to ask if uh, pastor young if you would just share with us a closing word of exhortation and encouragement uh pastor welton if you would do the same then pastor kim if you would do the same then just close us out in prayer i know that each and every one of you that are watching you're just like wow i was not expecting to just receive all of this real talk i mean it is such a blessing and a such a privilege to sit among these great 21st century leaders and to hear them be so transparent, um, to be so candid, especially during a time like this where people are searching and they're seeking and they have a longing for hope and for their faith to be increased. And so thank you for your exemplary leadership. And Pastor Micaiah, give us some words, Pastor Welton, and then Pastor Kim, give us some words and pray us out. Our God is the God of our flesh. And there is absolutely, positively, resolutely 
nothing too hard for God to do. Um, God is a God that is um, constantly doing something new while he is always remaining the same. And so in this season, I would just encourage every individual to embrace what God is doing and accept everything that God is allowing. Don't be afraid of the transformation and the change that is taking place in your life. Let God do it. And you will see that God who you saw in your yesterday is the same God who you will see in today and tomorrow. Because just as much as he was present in those areas that we were most comfortable and familiar with meeting him in, God is present in the place that is unfamiliar and in the territory that has been unmet for us, but has been predestined for us to live in. And so go all the way and never stop. And I would lastly like to say thank you so much, Pastor Johnson, for allowing uh, me to be a part of uh, this amazing uh, panel, a conversation with some of the most phenomenal individuals that are representing God and the kingdom um, today. Uh, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you for uh, what you're doing. And you be encouraged to stay on the wall. Wilson, you still can't hear me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a demon. <laughs> a, I can hear you now. See, I can, I, I, all right. Yeah. I heard all. Of, I heard all of your words tonight. Thank you so much, Pastor Welton. Um. Um. I mean, to be honest, Makaya took it. Pat Makaya took it right out of my mouth. I'm not being funny. What? 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 What I was gonna say is embrace what God is doing. Um. Because the truth is, what God's doing next looks nothing like what he did last. And, and, and in this season, I pray that you have the courage to create. The earth's canvas is blank. Every system has been shattered. Mm -hmm. So in this season, embrace what he's doing. Release the pressure of what it looked like last time, what didn't work last time. Maybe it didn't work last time because it was called to work this time. I'm going to be very honest with you. Makaya Young has known me for some years now. And, and we've had conversations offline. Man, what's crazy, Pastor Ivan, is I can honestly say that I believe that God has made sense out of the last eight to ten years of my life in the last six months. Yeah. Because many of us felt the shift. Many of us just weren't settled with the last thing because we felt the new thing. We just didn't know what it was. And we still don't know what it is. But the truth is there's some of us that were called to this time. So so don't be paralyzed by what happened last time. If you believe again, your future looks just like your faith. Thank you. Pastor Kim. Man, I just, you know, I want to thank you, Pastor Johnson, for including me in with these incredible guys tonight. Uh, what a great word. And for everybody watching tonight, man, if you hadn't been encouraged from just the transparency and, you know, the authenticity of understanding that we're all pastors and we're all sitting here telling you we're learning just like you. And so I just pray, I want to pray us out if that's okay, Pastor Johnson. Um, and I want to pray for, you know, all of you that are watching tonight. Maybe you got on here and you feel hopeless. Maybe you got on here and you feel discouraged. Maybe you feel like that you've been screaming for this pandemic to be over. And now all of the encouragement you got tonight, you ready just to stop fighting the tidal wave and just flip over and float and let God do a work on the inside of you. So Father, I just thank you tonight for these incredible men of God and the guys that you have brought into this room tonight for so many thousands that are watching and the replay that are going to watch. Lord, I thank you that we're going to have the courage to let go of any scent that we've been holding on to that would draw us back to an old way of thinking. Allow us to walk on water. Allow us to stop negotiating with you about uh, if you'll do it this way or if we can do it this way, it's more comfortable. Give us the courage, God, to fly. 
Give us the courage, God, to jump out and realize that if you, if we, if we fall, you're going to catch us or teach us how to fly. Lord, I thank you that our best is yet to come. I thank you that these last five months, these last four months of this year, that we will not be in fear. We will not worry. And God, we give you permission to get rid of all the residue and anything that we've been holding on to that would carry the pandemic further in than we need it to in our own personal lives. Father, forgive us. Forgive us if there's anything on the inside of us, Lord, that is in the way of you. Get our hearts right, God, and give us more than anything. Give us your peace. Download your peace on the inside of us. Give us sweet sleep tonight, God. And as we wake up in the morning, let us wake up rejuvenated, recalibrated, and reset, ready to fly into the best of our new 2020 with clarity, with vision. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. (laughs) Thank you, Pastor Kim. Thank you, Pastor Micaiah. Thank you, Pastor Welton. Thank you for all of you that have watched tonight. Join us next time for Kingdom Conversations. Thank you for tuning in to Kingdom Conversations. We pray you were uplifted, inspired, and propelled to advance the kingdom of God. Follow this ministry at C. Ivan Johnson on Facebook and YouTube.